Western Pennsylvania is known for its landmark cemeteries. And in the Point Breeze section of Pittsburgh, Homewood Cemetery is as picturesque as they come. No matter the season. Rolling green lawns, lots of natural light, lots of beautiful trees, judiciously spaced, roads that are easy to traverse, so it definitely draws you in. Jenny Benford loves this place and knows a lot about its history. It was founded as a lawn park cemetery, and that refers to the style of landscape and also the style of management to maintain the landscape. However beautiful and natural it looks, it's completely artificial. It's a designed space. The cemetery was founded in 1878 on 175 acres of land, once owned by Judge William Wilkins. Judge Wilkins was the Minister of War under President Tyler. He built a beautiful Georgian mansion in the middle of the woods out here called Homewood. So he dies in the 1860s and the cemetery corporation that wants to do an East End Cemetery purchases the land from his estate and they gave it the name of that estate. The founders also set into place guidelines about who could be buried here, guidelines that were not popular in other parts of the country. It was founded to provide a respectful burial place for everyone in Pittsburgh. If you look at the original mission statement and the rules and regulations, no mention is made, really, of race or religion. Before 1920, more than 1,200 African Americans were laid to rest in the Homewood Cemetery. In fact, the sixth person to be buried on this land was an African American child. And that was in October of 1878. So the cemetery was about two months old at that time. Um, this was a nine-year-old boy whose name was John Poles. He died and was buried the same day probably because he died of diphtheria. So there was no hesitation in his being placed here. And he is in section three. Which is one of the oldest parts of the cemetery. The exact location of John's grave is unknown. But exploring the burial sites of others can be a lesson in Pittsburgh black history. A lot of the very prominent people from the 20th century African-American community were involved with the Courier, including the Vans. Both Robert Lee Van and his wife, Jesse Van, are here in a mausoleum. Robert Van was the second editor of the Courier and really propelled the Courier into a place of influence, not only in the Pittsburgh area, but nationally. When he passes in the 1940s, his wife Jessie comes to the fore. She was the editor until the 1960s. This is the Van Mausoleum. This is where Robert Van and his wife Jessie are at rest. The monuments in the mausoleum start to look a little more Art Deco and a lot less Victorian. And the Van Mausoleum is a really good example of that. Nearby are the remains of others who work for the Courier, including Executive Editor P.L. Prattis, Managing Editor William G. Nunn, and his son, sports writer and pro football scout Bill Nunn Jr. One of the earliest supporters of the Courier and one of the most influential is Mrs. Daisy Lampkin. And she was very involved in the NAACP. In fact, her nickname was Mrs. NAACP. And she was a mentor to a young lawyer named Thurgood Marshall. So again, like the Vans, her influence extends way beyond Pittsburgh. One of the most visited grave sites. He's in section 12-2. Is that of an iconic photographer. He's in the middle of the hill, so finding him is a little difficult. Charles Teeny Harris documented urban black life in 20th century Pittsburgh. If you look between the obelisk and the Watson mausoleum, up the hill, you can see his family marker, it's curved on top. And his career starts in the 1920s and goes well into the 1960s, 1970s. He amassed a set of images that numbers into about 80,000. Those images are now housed at the Carnegie Museum of Art in Oakland. 
Charlene Fogey Barnett knew Teeny when she was a child. He photographed me from the time I was born until my late 20s. Years later, she is helping to oversee his collection. Pittsburgh was such a crossroads and people came here. So we have entertainers and sports figures and politicians. So it's an awesome archive. An archive that includes notable families like Charlene's, many of them buried here. In this unmarked area would be my grandparents. And then we've also had some of their children and one of my cousins. So the name Homewood Cemetery is like Teeny Harris or Center Avenue or the Hill District for me. Errol Garner was a child prodigy. His talent was noticed very early on, and he went on to be a major jazz influence, internationally known. Walt Harper was also a pianist of great renown. Well known in the Pittsburgh area, he was a nightclub owner as well. William Muggsy Moore, he was an influential police officer. The area in which Jake Malayans is at rest is one of the newer areas. It's a very normal, common-looking tablet, but the epitaph is, the brother was deep. Nate Smith, who was a very significant labor leader in Pittsburgh in the 1960s and 70s, he is the person most responsible for integrating the Pittsburgh construction unions and trade. As a form of protest, he actually laid down in front of bulldozers to stop construction work from happening. Discrimination that happened outside of these cemetery walls did not happen on this land. The early founders of Homewood Cemetery made sure of that. There was a level of respect that may not have been afforded elsewhere. It's just part of my family and part of my psyche. We established a reputation and it's one that we've been able to maintain. The Homewood Cemetery is like home to us. 